Well, in South Africa, as we continue to commemorate women in the month of August, this morning we speak to two experts on women's health, life coach Tanya Plerner and health coach Lynn Jernema. They will be talking to us about major health issues facing women and girl children in South Africa. Well, good morning, ladies. Good morning. <laughs> I'll start with you, Lynn. What are the major diseases? Let's just get into it straight away. The major diseases facing women in South Africa. Well, today we have a big obesity um, uh, a problem mm. and that gives rise to problems such as diabetes, heart disease, mm. stroke, etc. Mm. We then also have breast cancer and cerv cervical cancer which is still a major problem and then of course in South Africa AIDS and HIV. Mm -mm. Well let's talk about obesity because that, uh, as I was talking to you before that's something that we're seeing a lot more in children now as well. Mm -hmm. that's a, it's a big problem in that more and more young people are becoming obese mm. and if one can consider that if you are 9 and 10 years old then you're obese mm. Think about what your arteries and your heart and your lungs look like mm. at that stage and, and compare that to previously where people might only have experienced those problems when they were in their 30s or 40s, mm. where they were predisposed to heart attacks and stroke. And one can then imagine what the problems are that these kids are going to go through when they're older. Tanya, let's talk about women's lifestyles today. Yes. Women have taken on a massive role in the corporate arena. So mm. they're now trying to juggle the, the corporate life, family life, raising children, mm. and they often, I'm finding, neglect themselves. So there's this mm. mad rush around where there's very little time for me. Mm. So we need to try and balance them. In a balanced lifestyle is really the key for everything. Mm. It's moderate exercise, moderate eating, looking after your families. Mm. So it's that whole balance of life that we're looking for. What do you say to a woman who works 9 to 5? In the morning she's rushing to get the kids dressed. Mm. She drops them off at school, goes to work, comes back. She's going to feed them, clean the house. When is she going to actually make time for herself? Well, what it is, it's a coaching time management modality that needs to be put in place for that particular woman. She needs to look at her timeline and say, right, do I get up an hour earlier mm. so the rush doesn't happen in the morning, conduct my day, including my children in that lifestyle, mm. and then coming home at night, plan her time so maybe your husband can assist with a certain mm. chore and then she runs mm. and, and does you know, emails or whatever else, you know, afterwards. Mm. So they can plan their lifestyles. Mm. Lynn, let's go back to heart disease because this is a major issue and you were talking about early symptoms and catching it early. You know, heart disease, especially in women, more than half or about half um, of the people that have heart disease or have a heart attack or stroke mm. are women. And most of the time the heart um, condition is lifestyle orientated. Mm. It has to do with the fact that you're stressed out, that you're not mm. eating properly, that you're smoking. Um, so one of the, I think that what one can do mostly is that you can go for regular checkups, make mm. sure that your blood pressure is okay, mm. check your cholesterol levels, make sure that your sugar levels are fine, mm. and manage yourself from there. You know, one of the issues, because I went to, like if, when I go to a doctor and I say to them, I want a general checkup, it almost seems as though you've got to know yourself what questions to ask the doctor, because they won't say to you, check for this, check for that. I mean, only if it's a really, really good doctor who's going to sit and actually talk to you. These days, it's like you're in there five minutes they rush you out so what 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 do you do in that case okay. I think that you need to understand what your history your your health history is all about see mm. what you're predisposed to what your what diseases your parents had mm. and you need to empower yourself with the knowledge ab um, ab about those diseases mm. go on the internet speak to pharmacists speak to the doctor find out for yourself what the the, the tests are that you should have and go prepare mm. to the doctor and ask for those mm. tests we were I was speaking to learn before we were talking about girl children and cervical cancer mm -hmm. and how sometimes you know with with parents it's kind of like a difficult thing that even though we've moved so so much people are still kind of like you don't talk to your 12 year old and 13 year old and think they might be sexually active so on the on the lifestyle kind of it what would you advise women to do I think when it comes to their girl children specifically absolutely. moving with what society is doing is it's, it's a much more open environment they must actually just come out and speak to their children and be able to communicate with that open line and, and face the reality that life has actually changed mm. since they were children mm. and just move with that mm. and embrace mm. it and go forward and actually talk to their children mm. 
Lynn, tell us about cervical cancer because you were saying it is a big issue. It's still a very big issue. It kills many, many women. And the reason that it kills women is that it's often diagnosed too late. Mm -hmm. And that's a real pity because with a pap smear today, cervical cancer can be diagnosed very early and treated accordingly. Mm -hmm. But people are afraid of talking about sexual issues, mm -hmm. are afraid of, of admitting that their children might be sexually active. So now could, it, could, it, could a, a child, 12, 13, get that? If that they're sexually active, they could get it later mm -hmm. in life. You know, it, um, cervical cancer has to do with sexual activity. Mm, mm. Um, and one of the easiest ways to detect it is to have a regular pap smear. Mm. It is recommended that you have a pap smear every two years mm. and sometimes even more, depending on how frequently you change your partner. So when do you start, when do you start these kind of tests? When you become sexually active. So even when you're nine, ten, because, I mean, as shocking as that may sound, there are kids that it's younger and younger and younger that yes, are becoming sexually yes, active. Yes. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to leave it at that. Thank you so much for coming in this morning, especially so early in the morning. <laughs> we were speaking to Lynn Derner, who is a health coach, and Tanya Ploner, who is a life coach, and they were talking to us about women and girl children in South Africa, the major health issues facing them.